Carolina. And good afternoon to those that maybe are out west. It would be 9 a.m. Pacific. Um, Bob Buchanan, Executive Vice President of Sales with Rapid Scale. I'm joined today by Brett Gein, our Senior Solutions Engineer. Brett, are you with me? I'm here, Bob. Good morning. Good awesome. afternoon, everybody. Awesome, awesome. So we we've, we kind of shifted the lineup this year and, and have had a, a number of different of the leaders um, lead these sessions for our partners. I'm super excited to be back today. Um, got a great topic, um, SD-WAN, Beyond Connectivity. Um, I'll just go ahead and, and, and state right from the beginning. Um, we're not going to be talking about you know, you're probably not going to learn a lot about just SD-WAN. We're making the assumption that many of our partners have caught on to the trend. We will definitely talk about um, what's happening in the market, but more importantly, we, we hope you come away with why rapid scale for SD-WAN? Why would you do this with us? Why would your customers buy with this with us? What are those advantages? So without further ado, let's, uh, <clears throat> let's make a couple um, – housekeeping comments here. We, uh, we record all these webinars. Um, if you have an opportunity to, or you, you really want to ask a question, go ahead and ask it through chat at any time. We'll delay the answering the questions to after, but uh, we'll try and get to them all. If we don't, um, we'll send an email out after answering, the, uh, answering any questions that we weren't able to get to. Um, and we also will uh, send out a recording and a copy of the presentation. So. Just a reminder to everybody, we are currently running a pretty attractive SPIF. It was for deals that were registered um, basically through October 30th and then that close um, prior to the end of the year. So that really it, it encompasses, um, I don't think there's any, don't believe there's any limitations on services. We're really including just about everything in our portfolio within the SPIF, even including Office 365. So guys, if you've got deals that are registered with rapid scale, we're obviously together looking to get a good strong push for your end and uh, really looking forward to, to putting some money in your pocket and, and uh, servicing our clients and finishing the year strong. So um, let's get started, right? I mean, <clears throat> marketing insists that we always kind of have to throw out a few stats. So here's our stat slide. Um, <laughs> um, but, but in all seriousness, what's actually occurring, right? It's, it's a massive trend um, with SD-WAN. I mean, it's, it, it's selling like hotcakes through a number of different providers. Customers have a really strong appetite for it. And this is not something that's that's coming. It's not it's not something that's approaching us or we're pre being prepared for. It's now. The opportunity is right now. So just a couple a couple points, right? Ninety percent of the branch equipment, i.e., routers, um, is up for refresh um, going through 2020. So these are devices that probably are legacy, right? Thirty to fifty percent of large enterprise traffic is shifting to the cloud. These are changing traffic patterns um, and really making an impact on the, the legacy WAN environments and making that experience or, or their ability to support that, le that level of traffic suboptimal. Um, and we're sitting right in the cloud space. We're seeing this every day, guys, especially the opportunity um, in the mid-market where, where, where our customers tend to sit. I mean, it, it massive shift both to software as a service, infrastructure as a service, and platform as a service instead of having every everything sit in HQ. Um, and then this last bullet is, is really eye-opening, right? So you think about a quarter of a billion desktop um, video conferencing users uh, globally by 2020. I mean, that is massive. And you just think about the level of stress it's putting on these legacy networks and the need for, for truly reliable and quality um, connections um, across, across, across the globe is, is only going to put um, additional stress on, on the buyer to ensure that they've got reliable networks to support um, their end users and business needs. So what are some of the common market challenges, right? Um, if you think about, I'll tell you this, if you think about three to five years ago, and I don't think anyone, this is going to be a surprise to anybody, but we're, we're talking about, especially in the mid-market, an environment where everyone's got their phones, their servers, their data, and there was a real propensity to keep that on-prem and put your arms around it. And that is absolutely gone, right? Brett, here's a question for you. Uh, you know, how would you, how would you relate the difference between managing 
think about the think about a Cisco router and managing command lines and that device versus what the effort and skill set it requires today to manage your typical Bellow Cloud box. Yeah, Bob, that, that's a great question. So, um, first of all, your your small to mid-sized organizations um, don't always have an IT staff to do this. And, and for those that don't, they normally offset it with an MSP that's taking care of it for you. Um, generally, uh, you have to have a qualified person that gets in, understands your topology, and, and can get in and make those changes for you. Uh, and that in itself can get expensive. Um, the the um, large complex sites where you're having to make changes via CLI generally can get a little bit more complex and, and having multiple um, areas for, for touching to complete the solution. So you've got branch offices that may need touch points and go in and do CLI changes. You've got data centers that may need to have modifications or other branch locations that may need to have modifications to complete that solution. And that adds time and, and energy and, and so forth um, that uh, some organizations um, don't have the, 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 the money to spend on. SD-WAN comes in, and SD-WAN can help provide a uh, single pane of glass um, for an administrator to go in and view and configure all sites for their topology uh, holistically. Uh, and, and a few buttons um, allow the, the push of that configuration to all those devices affected uh, you know, um, within a matter of minutes. So gone are having to touch each individual site, each individual piece of equipment in that uh, line of the topology. And here we are in one single pane of glass, uh, modifying and um, uh, pushing all those configs out at once, which drastically reduces the time for, for changes needed. You know, I think some, there's, a, there's a number of market challenges. We've hit on, you know, some of these complex legacy, legacy network deployments, which we'll get into here momentarily. Obviously, um, you're, you're, we're, fo we're kind of living in this multi-cloud world where you have these heterogeneous platforms um, that, that are organizations, regardless of vertical, regardless of size, are accessing to run their business. Um, and then, obviously, that's putting stress on bandwidth demand. Um, but simplicity, and, and that's really driven, I, I believe, especially in the SMB and mid-market from the, you, and you touched on it, the, the lack of labor. If you think about the economic climate with, with unemployment being so low, the ability for these companies to compete and go out and, and bring in the, the necessary talent and skill set that it is required to manage these complex networks, it's just not feasible any longer. I'm sure you would agree. I do, um, and, and not only the talent, but um, with these, uh, with with application sets these days, with you know growing need for um, organizations to centralize and, and uh, secure everything, you're, you're having um, your IT administrators, your your bodies, uh, needing to create some form of connectivity to a central location because it's also not feasible to have uh, business uh, applications at each location. Um, or, uh, you know, um, not having an MPLS that can uh, create a low latency envir you know, um, um, environment to a centralized data center. Uh, and so you're, you're spending a lot of money on, um, on these MPLS, on the routers, on your IT, where SD-WAN comes in and helps simplify a lot of that. Uh, you don't have to put um, uh, high expense into an MPLS circuit where you can go with more of a commodity base um, uh, circuit or, 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 or multiple redundant circuits within an organization or within a branch office. Um, you don't have to put the time and labor into administrators going and configuring uh, each one of those devices. And, and ultimately, you don't have to have all those devices uh, at each location anymore. I mean, um, simplifying the topology always uh, helps with, um, with management aspect um, and, and reduces costs. So let me let me focus in on something. I said I said simplify. You said simplify. On that on that theme, I mean, we, we, no longer today are we are we really you, you see customers coming and saying, hey, you know what? I want to design your typical hub and spoke based network where I have HQ and all these different um, adjacent branch offices, and I'm going to manage it in a traditional you know again complex MPLS or or, or like infrastructure model. Um, my question is, what are we seeing at the edge? What are we? How many edge devices in the, in the typical branch are actually necessary today? And and how does that yeah. factor into simplification? So let's take um, a typical customer that we see come in the door. 
and they typically have a, a router, a firewall, switches, and then their uh, internal infrastructure or, or workstations, or your user base. Um, you know, with, with SD-WAN, you're really looking at simplifying that topology right there uh, with removing the need for the router, um, even if it is an MPLS circuit that it's being used for, uh, and you're looking at removing the firewall because the SD-WAN device is going to uh, take over um, those components and allow all traffic to backhaul through to um, the data center and, um, you know, still providing access to Internet for, say, guest Wi-Fi um, connections that need to go out through that branch and don't need necessarily like connections to the data center. Um, but firewall policies are all centralized now, um, so you're removing the need for purchasing firewalls at every location. Routers, um, the SD-WAN device, will be able to leverage in-place MPLS or replace it, you know, to reduce costs for that uh, organization. And think about a, a company that has 50 sites. You're removing the need for 50 routers and 50 firewalls and, and reducing that down to one firewall at the data center uh, and multiple um, low-cost VeloCloud or, you know, SD-WAN solutions at each of the branch offices. So, I mean, that's an awesome point, and I've seen us do this, and very rarely in, in, these, in these deployments are we actually flying folks around the country to actually configure these endpoint devices. And some of our more complex deployments that might be required, but I would say nine times out of ten, the, these devices ship on site and they're plug and play and then we can configure them almost, um, you know, really 100% from, from a, our remote data center and location. Is that is that an accurate assessment of you know, how easy this really is? Yeah, that's correct. It's almost zero touch. It's um, you know, the, the technology now has gotten to a point where um, being able to ship devices directly to a, an on-premise location and with just a few uh, connection points into a switch, um, based off of uh, a few standardizations that RapidScale has put together through our um, best practices that we've seen in the market, um, we're able to connect that edge device directly to the uh, orchestrator and configure while on site. Uh, it's, it's very quick, um, much easier, and the deployment for site um, has sped up um, the, the, the speed to market for a, a company that uh, deploys um, sites fairly quickly or, or has a need for adding or removing sites, depending on their business model. We're able to get them up and running within hours or days rather than um, months' worth of configuration and, and uh, um, trial and error. Awesome. So we've talked a little bit about, we spent some time referencing Velo Cloud, right? So let's talk about Velo in the, in the market. There's a, lot of, there's, there's a lot of providers out there that are they're tied with Velo and for good reason. Um, you know, we, we, we chose them for, for multiple reasons. I think the biggest one we might look to is that you can't go wrong with uh, picking the, the folks in the top right of the magic quadrant. Um, the thing that I think that, that, that really is eye-opening to me is that the new entrants in this space, as well as the, maybe the, the nuances and differences, right? So you have, I think you have, you know, what I would call you the, the, the startup environment. You have, you know, the hardware folks and, and maybe even the, 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 the carriers, right? Um, all trying to play in this game. And when I think about the, the startups in particular, we've seen some recent consolidation. Um, we, we, we've seen Cisco acquire Vitella, right? We've seen Oracle um, take on Tulare. Um, some, some large transactions where you see larger transactions. And in in speaking of Velo, they were acquired by, by VMware. Um, I mean, I couldn't think of um, a better marriage for, for VMware. And, and when you think about our core business um, running and supporting mission-critical applications on our cloud platforms that are powered by um, the VMware hypervisor, maybe talk for a moment around, you know, what we're doing and, and how that, how those, what, what synergies might be to our advantage and how that maybe trickles down to the customer with, with the marriage between VMware and, uh, and Velo. Yeah, so as an organization, Rapid Scale, we um, have a very tight um, uh, partnership with VMware. I mean, we um, host everything, uh, our back end platform is VMware. And uh, it, it, you know, the marriage between Velo and VMware um, is, is especially great for us when it comes to um, the APIs that it, it's built into, and, and VMware has turned into its NSX networking suites of products. Um, it drastically changed the network landscape over the couple, next couple of years. And cloud providers like us um, who are currently using VMware with NSX 
will benefit from um, that integration point into services that we offer, um, into self-service um, portals and, and co-management models of support. Uh, and it allows us to take advantage of uh, the, the, the newer technologies that um, WAN optimization will, will turn into over the next couple of years. And, and with our tight integration with VMware and our platform, we're able to very seamlessly turn that around and make that available to our customers as soon as it's uh, available to us. Um, so it, it's, um, it, it's a great um, uh, marriage, if you will, for, for the, the backend API when everything's API driven these days. Uh, and, and we're taking advantage of that tenfold. Awesome, Brett. That, I think that's a natural segue right into why rapid scale for SD WAN. Um, yeah, I think the marketplace and our partners in the channel, they, they think of us, I think, predominantly as the folks that are application experts, at least n not from the standpoint of we're not writing applications, um, you know, we're not custom building apps, we're supporting apps, and we're supporting the delivery of those apps to any device anywhere in the globe, right, off of our platform or, or, or perhaps even someone else's platform at times. Um, but at the end of the day, because we're application experts, we're constantly troubleshooting networks. And as, you, as we go ahead and, 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 and continue to build out our service portfolio in practice, SD-WAN further enables um, rapid scale to ensure the secure delivery of those applications over reliable networks. Um, so I think that's a big talking point that we're we're constantly trying to push out to the marketplace, and it, it only makes sense. Um, I'll also note that the rapid scale just is not a Velo reseller, right? There's a lot of, of folks in the space that are, are reselling and taking some margin off that transaction. We we are a cloud service provider. Everything that we offer across our portfolio, our customers and our partners are calling us. We're taking first line of support. We've got the talent, the engineering expertise um, to, to handle the solution, troubleshoot it, um, fine tune it, ensure the quality delivery of those applications um, over those networks. So, as we further think about, um, and, and I'll note again, our customers are calling us. Um, as we further think about wide rapid scale, the, the, the other thing that I think about is, let's say that you, it's the network agnostic piece, right? Let's say that you're a partner out there and, and you went out and you did a three-year term with rapid scale and you're leveraging Velo, which again, top right-hand quadrant, we're managing it, and you've got multi-locations, maybe it's 50, maybe it's 100, and there's, a, there's really a heterogeneous environment of all different types of networks, right? Whether it's MPLS, it's DIA, there's networks all over the place. Um, and, and you're looking to maybe consolidate, change network providers. Maybe you, maybe you have one provider and you don't like them and you want to change. The, the opportunity and the agility and the, the flexibility to continue with, with your SD-WAN solution but ride that over any provider really that's available to you I think is a, a massive advantage. Um, I'd love for you to comment a little bit more on that, Brett, but also maybe if there's, a, if there's any other advantages that you might – um, add to, for, for, the, for our partners that you see from an engineering perspective that really give us uh, uh, a competitive advantage in the market. Yeah, and, and you hit the um, nail on the head. I mean, we're not just a reseller. We are essentially the front lines, and we're supporting the, the SD-WAN service uh, on a carry agnostic platform. So we will take those calls to your carriers um, when necessary. The, the, we will work on behalf of the customer uh, to manage the carrier and make sure they're getting – uh, the best service possible. And, and um, VeloCloud uh, allows us to have reporting metrics and so forth within the environment to, to be uh, more on the proactive side than, than just reactionary. Um, so just, just be, let me interrupt you there. So, you're, wait, so wait, if I heard you correctly, um, our customers, rapid scale customers, can call our NOC looking for support, not only on SD-WAN, but when we take that call, we will also call the, the actual underlying carrier on their behalf, regardless of who it is. Is that, is that accurate? That, that's correct. Yep, we will, we will be that white glove service for our customers and manage that carrier uh, through any trouble uh, in resolution um, on their behalf. Awesome. Um, so on top of that, um, we also, you know, VMware has a global presence when it comes to gateways that they offer throughout um, the SD-WAN solution. Um, we also enable all data centers um, that, that we have uh, to host these gateways as well. And what that allows us to do is um, allow for customers that have uh, heterogeneous style networks um, where some MPLS versus some commodity internet um, hosted cloud services with us 
uh, or even hosted cloud services within uh, any of the, the hyperscalers uh, or SaaS services online. It, it creates more of a seamless connection for uh, all of our customers to, to aggregate um, connectivity uh, and, and services through us for that seamless connection for their business. Um, we, uh, another big point that um, is a differentiator for rapid scale is that we do not charge for bandwidth. So looking at some of our customers that are aggregating all their services in SUN through our data center, we're not charging bandwidth out to the internet uh, or in from the internet or any of to the other SaaS providers uh, or hyperscalers. Um, which is a huge value add today because everything's based off of uh, data traffic in and out. Um, we see a value for the customers to leverage SUAN through us for, for quality of service, access and ease um, of, of application delivery and, and customization, you know, configuration topologies. Um, but, you know, try to save them, uh, create value and save them money where, where it's necessary. Awesome. Thanks, Brett. That, I think that was a, you encapsulated that really well, and I really think it, it speaks to why, 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 why SD-WAN through rapid scale. So let's talk for a few moments. Just uh, There's a ton of questions for pre-qualifying. We try to put just some low-hanging fruit out there, um, and, and our, our channel management team is really, would be really happy to work with you. Um, so your channel manager in your region, whether that be myself, whether that be our SC team, um, including Brett, if we really wanted to get deeper. But when you're scratching the surface, just thinking about, you know, hey, how many branch locations? Do you have more than 15? That actually seems like a sweet spot. I'll note, though, I mean, we've got a customer right here in the Carolinas that comes to mind to me, right? So the, the, they have a single location, and they have SD-WAN. And I'll, I'll tell you, we, we took their, their phone systems, they put those in the cloud, they, 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 they put infrastructure in the cloud, they went to Office 365, and you know what, they were looking for um, basically stability over the open internet. And the, the, I don't see a lot of it, but there is a use case for much smaller deployments than just 15. So I wouldn't want to limit ourselves, but I would, I would say the low hanging fruit starts at 15. Would you, uh, would you agree with that, Brett? Yeah, I agree. I mean, even for um, uh, some of our customers that have that one site, just leveraging a WAN optimization technology to reduce yep. jitter and packet loss across a, a single circuit or a sing from a single location um, has, has benefits. Um, when it comes to the ease of deployment and, and being able to uh, reduce costs uh, with, with circuits and so forth, MPLS, um, yeah, 15 sites and, and higher are, are great value adds. We, we touched on, you know, really that, that multi-cloud, hybrid cloud strategy where you've got multiple workloads over multiple platforms. SD-WAN is a great use case. Um, do you, again, going back to the simplicity where you might have multiple edge, you know, edge devices and can you consolidate those and really get um, more value for your dollar? And then, you know, this is, this, is a, this is a challenge and an opportunity, right? So many of us in, um, in the partner community have customers that, that the, these are deals that, that, they, we, we, that they sold, that, that, uh, that are paying great commissions and are, are, are part of our livelihood. But at the end of the day, the customer is driving um, cost savings is, is certainly a big advantage potentially through an SD-WAN type solution. So, you know, the risk there is as these terms come up, do you try to, uh, do, how do you protect your churn? You may take a little bit of a hit um, now when you return and go to SD-WAN, but at the, at the end of the day, you really want to protect your customer and, 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 uh, and, and really put, put up a wall uh, against any type of competition. So. Um, just some, some good questions to try to understand who, who might be the key buyers, what are their top issues, um, and how can we find our next deal? And, and speaking of next deal, I mean, we, we, we closed a recent deal. Think about a 50-location kind of finance company. Um, this organization had, if you, if you just high level right on the surface, they had a third-party MSP. They had their PBX um, and their server infrastructure um, all kind of in a colo environment, so it wasn't necessarily on-prem, but close. Um, they they had a they had a UCAS infrastructure, um, and and they also wanted to add DR. But at the end of the day, when you when they looked at like oh, and by the way, most importantly, they had an MPLS network. When you add all this together, they they were having a significant um, significant network reliability challenges. They were they had multiple kind of hands in the cookie jar from a support standpoint. Um, I'll note they had limited staff. 
Um, and, and we came in with a revised solution, um, obviously SD-WAN, some infrastructure in the cloud, um, added disaster recovery. Um, we're actually looking at desktops as, as an upsell and what, what a great use case for, for desktops and application delivery over SD-WAN managed by rapid scale. But the message here was that customer ended up saving on the OPEX side about $20,000 a month um, by deploying this new solution. Um, the total MRR on the deal, $42,000 a month, 36 months, um, and, and Brett, I know from a, t from a technical perspective, you might be able to add a little bit more context around some of the drivers, but when you just look on the, the businesses on the surface, great deal for us, great deal for our partner, and certainly great, great, great opportunity for the customer to add reliability, stability, um, and also limit their OPEX cost. Um, maybe add some more yeah. color, Brett, if you would. Yeah, I mean, on top of that, the, the customer, uh, when we started talking with them, had aging hardware that they owned that was um, coming up for a refresh, um, both with support and for uh, uh, for new new hardware in general, um, full life cycle. Um, the, the 50 MPLS locations, um, they did have a, a, a significantly large cost when it came to that. And the location that they were co-load was not in an ideal location. So they were looking at moving into a new colo uh, with the cost for that migration process altogether. I mean, we came in and we helped them on a, a plan to remove the costly MPLS and move them onto fiber and commodity internet circuits. Um, we worked with them to uh, take over the MSP um, services. Um, we introduced the SD-WAN solution that um, helped drive down costs from an MSP side of uh, management, um, but with uh, the, the devices that they needed to, to purchase for each of the locations. Again, creating that one real device at each edge. Um, along with routing over to consolidate security when it came down to um, accessing the internet connection from a central location being, being the DC. Um, we helped them with their colo. Uh, we reduced uh, or, or you know, kept them from having to incur a large cost on colo uh, by uh, moving their applications and showing the applications um, running, uh, that can run well in a, in a hosted solution. Um, and, and all this um, together kind of helped remove a lot of the finger pointing that you have between vendors Obviously, if you have multiple people with hands in the pot, um, there, it, you have a lot of finger pointing. It's just the nature of the beast. Um, we've removed a lot of that by, by streamlining and, and reducing a lot of the touch points within the, the environment. Um, we helped them find a UCAS provider that uh, plays well with SD-WAN, and we configured SD-WAN on uh, the UCAS provider's behalf to provide better quality of service for the voice connectivity, which was a huge pain point that they had. Um, and it, it, like Bob mentioned, it allowed for, uh, we, we worked with them on a DR plan and it still reduced costs after all said and done by 20K for the customer. Now, obviously, you know, we, you know, don't like to see MRR drop by any means, but when it comes to prov providing the proper solution uh, for the customer and allowing them to recoup 20 grand um, uh, MRR, um, it, it's a win-win. So it, it certainly was. Fantastic, uh, fantastic deal. No, it was. It certainly was. Thanks, Brett. And we're kind of getting back, getting close to the end. I'm going to open up for questions, but I'll go back to what I said at the beginning. Why, why rapid scale? Why SD WAN through rapid scale? And there's kind of four things that stick out to me. Um, there's others we touched on them, but when I really think about it, I think about just being network agnostic. And in the deal you just referenced, you know what? The, the, our partners can go out and sell any type of connection they want to these folks. Rapid Skills not deploying those networks. We're not managing the, the procurement of, of necessarily of those networks. Um, so that's, that, that's an opportunity for our partners to advise and be the trusted advisor from that capacity. Um, I'll also note that, you know, Rapid Skills is a cloud service provider, and what that really means is we, while we manage cloud infrastructure, we've got a lot of MSP type attributes. Taking that call from the customer, having more of an intimate relationship, and being able to, to, to escalate those calls directly to the customer's carrier, um, huge differentiator on behalf of our clients. Um, and then you mentioned the gateways and those gate, those Velo gateways being being managed by Rapid Scale, being in our, our network, um, on our cloud platform, providing a, a, a lot of a lot of efficiencies, including the routing of traffic, QoS, the ability to troubleshoot, and and, all, and obviously last, the the ability to to really ensure the secure and reliable delivery of applications. Being experts on the application side, but also not not just thinking about how I deliver it out of my cloud platform, but deliver it to the end user. What 
what's the end user experience actually look like? Um, those are those are really the things that come to mind for me. So, Summer, we're kind of getting close to the end here. We will uh, we will be happy to take any questions that have uh, come through. Yeah, I'll ask a couple of them. Um, so, first, does RapidScale offer proactive carrier services monitoring and management as part of the solution? I heard that you will help if the customer calls, but will you take points? That's a great Brad, question. I'd like to defer and, to you. And, yeah, I'll defer to you on that yeah, one. That's a great question. And we do have service to, to help with monitoring of the circuits uh, in a proactive sense. Um, regardless, in, in either proactive or reactionary, we will take the call to the carrier on behalf of the customer. Great. All right, um, this one's kind of long. In as much as SD-WAN requires at least two circuits to operate, are you saying that the customer does not have to pay for a secondary circuit? Does RapidScale provide for 4G and 5G redundancy? Uh, another great question. So, um, yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, technically speaking, the customer can still utilize SD-WAN technology for WAN optimization purposes on one circuit, one carrier. Uh, is it ideal? No, and, and you're not reaping the benefits of, of SD-WAN um, for what it's truly made for when it comes to redundancy or um, highly available QoS style solutions. Um, but is it possible? Absolutely. Um, when it comes to 4G and 5G, uh, we don't necessarily provide the, the, the contracts or the, the hardware for 4G and 5G. However, uh, we do have solutions in place now that does leverage uh, 4G and 5G, and we will be happy to help support that as well. Awesome, and we'll just cover one more, you guys. Um, this one says, have you stopped using Windstream Type 2 circuits? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, generally we, we're not in the practice of provisioning the circuits or, or procuring them on behalf of the customer. Um, uh, with the position that Windstream's in right now, obviously we uh, will still support um, that the customer if they have those circuits in place. Um, uh, obviously, if, if there's a recommendation to uh, move to different circuits or, or have any need to move, then we can help uh, um, with um, suggestions, um, but uh, we will support the customer regardless of the, the carrier that they have. Great. Um, I saw a couple more come in, but you guys, I have them written down and I will send some follow-up answers in the email that goes out later today with the deck. So. Thanks, Summer. Yeah. Hey gang, really appreciate it. The, the, this is uh, exciting times for us. This is great pull through. There's pull through opportunities with SD WAN. Um, that's another major advantage. We sell these we sell these network services, and all of a sudden, infrastructure service, DR, Office 365, um, uh, you know, ancillary and, and adjacency security type services. Those are all there, and, and really a, a, an excellent opportunity to drive up um, MRC, but at the same time, really servicing our, our customers. So uh, with that. I'll leave you. Enjoy the rest of the summer, and uh, happy selling. Take care.